Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 6, page 96. Continuing with Chapter 3-1, Love. I was talking to a friend of mine who had been in ministry for years, and we were analyzing what happened to some ministers. One of the ministers was in the USA, who, when another minister was going through a sexual scandal in his own personal life, he attacked him violently through the media. Of course, we do not condone sexual immorality in any minister or in any disciple of Jesus. We need to address the sin and openly state our disapproval of the sin, but we must extend love and mercy to the disciple of Jesus or to the minister so that there is room for repentance and a time of restoration into the fellowship, as Paul explained to the church of Corinth. And as to the restoration to the ministerial duty, only God can do that, even after we have submitted to the leadership and counsel of other ministers for restoration, but God is the only one who can truly restore a person's life and a person into the ministry. That minister used to have stadiums filled when he went to Latin America for his crusades, but now... After his restoration, many people in his church left, some stayed with him, and when he goes to Latin America, he is not able to fill any stadium, but a room with a couple of hundred people. Sexual immorality is one of the deadliest weapons of the devil against ministers of the gospel. Sexual immorality, financial scandal, and heresy are the true weapons of the devil against ministers of the gospel. Please always pray for your minister of the gospel that he or she will not fall into any of them. That American preacher who did not extend mercy to his fellow minister who fell into sexual immorality but criticized him over and over again, later he also fell into sexual immorality. We also analyzed two ministers of the gospel in Nigeria who are rivals like the two American televangelists we mentioned. One used to have a marital problem, and his rival used to make fun of him and attack him because his marriage was not stable. They used to use the local media and secular media to attack each other. A couple of years later, the Nigerian gospel minister, who used to attack his rival minister on the aspect of marriage, began to experience the same problems in his own marriage and has filed for divorce. As I sat there with my friend, the word of the Lord came to us, saying, They have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Hosea 8 verse 7 Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he also will reap. For he sowing to his flesh will reap corruption from the flesh. But he sowing to the Spirit will reap life everlasting from the Spirit. Galatians 6 verse 7 to 8 For he who has shown no mercy shall have judgment without mercy, for mercy triumphs over judgment. James 2 verse 13 First of all, ministers of the gospel should never be rivals. They are in the flesh. The devil is the one behind you, causing you to compete with each other. The kingdom of God is not in competition, but it is complementary. If you have bitter jealousy and strife in your hearts, do not glory and lie against the truth. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife are, there is confusion and every foul deed. But the wisdom that is from above is first truly pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. James 3 verse 14 to 18 
so those ministers did not show mercy when their fellow ministers were being attacked by the devil. With their attack they sowed for themselves the wind, so they have reaped the whirlwind. Paul tells us, Brothers, if a man is overtaken in a fault, you, the spiritual ones, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, being nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one prove his own work, and then he alone will have a boast in himself and not in another. For each one will bear his own load. Galatians 6 verse 1 to 5 We should correct our brothers and sisters who are overtaken in a fault, a heresy, a sexual scandal, or a financial scandal, and we should restore them to the faith as they repent of their fault and forsake it. That correction and restoration must be done in meekness, and we should consider ourselves that we are not better than them. It is only the grace of God that has kept us from falling. On the contrary, we ought to pray for them and for ourselves that we will not fall into the trap of the enemy. Apart from the agape love of God or unconditional love of God, we also have the love for family members which is called storge love, the love that one has for a friend which is called filio love. Finally, we have the sexual love that husband and wife have for each other which is called eros love and epithumio love or lust. The storage love or family love is very important to God because marriage is the first institution God ordained in the Garden of Eden. God wants us to have a good family, a family where members love each other. They do not try to kill each other like Cain did to Abel, Genesis 4. They do not try to cheat and deceive each other like Jacob did to Esau, Genesis 27. But they truly care for each other and only seek the good of the other members of the family. They relate well with each other. They do not envy, hate, curse and slander each other, but they bless and rejoice for each other's success and prosperity. Rebecca had a good relationship with her relatives. They were so happy for her when she got married. They blessed her with all their hearts before sending her to Isaac, her husband. As it is written, They blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, be the mother of thousands of millions, and let your seed possess the gate of those who hate them. And Rebecca rose up, and her young woman, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Genesis 24, verse 60 to 61. There are people who do not even talk to their parents, sons, daughters, brothers and sisters, cousins, nephews, grandparents. There is no family love or storage love in that family. No matter what people have done to us, we must be able to forgive them. If they have tried to murder us, we must do our best to forgive them and still relate with them. I shared the example of my mother's relatives who shot her with a gun, but God delivered her so that the bullets missed her. We no longer go to their place because we know their hatred toward us, but when we meet in the streets, we talk. Rebecca had such a good family relationship with her people that when her elder son Esau wanted to murder the younger son Jacob, she sent Jacob to her father's house. She said to Jacob, Now, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away. Genesis 27 verse 43 to 44 no matter what happened, we should try to forgive and be reconciled with our family members. Esau found a place in his heart to forgive his brother Jacob. 
When Jacob came back from Laban's house, Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children of Jacob and said, Who are these with you, Jacob? So Jacob said to Esau, They are the children whom God has graciously given your servant. Genesis 33 verse 4 to 5 Whenever I read this part of the reconciliation of Esau and Jacob, I have tears of joy in my eyes because God has restored the family love between these two brothers. I tell you, Esau had become a prince and had conquered the mountains of Seir, killed the giants that lived there and had obtained many riches and many servants. But what does it profit a man if he wins, even conquers the whole world, but loses his soul and even the people of his household? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul or to restore the love in his family and with his family members? Matthew 16 verse 26 Jesus tells us, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6 verse 21 some people have the wrong priorities in life. They treasure money more than their family, ministry more than family, career more than family, sport more than family. The Godhead, Father, Son and Spirit must be first in our relationship. Second in the order of priorities must be our spouse when we are married. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 32 to 40 the third priority must be our children. They should not come before the spouse because they will soon leave the parents' home to form their own home. Genesis 2 verse 24 and Ephesians 5 verse 31. The fourth priority must be providing for our family for he who cannot provide for his own household is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. And the fifth priority is ministry and church activities. My prayer is that we will all get our priorities right in life. Moses also had a good family relationship with his in-laws, and especially with his father-in-law. He was working for his father-in-law as a shepherd, and there was no deception on behalf of Jethro. Laban, on the other hand, deceived Jacob and cheated him many times. Laban was a bad father-in-law to Jacob. Jacob testified against Laban to his daughters, saying, Your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Genesis 31 verse 7 But Jethro was good to Moses. Exodus 2, 15 to 25 and Exodus 3 verse 1 when Moses wanted to go and visit his people in Egypt, Jethro blessed him. Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brothers who are in Egypt and see if they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Exodus 4 verse 18 but Jacob had to run away from his father-in-law Laban. Laban hunted him down to kill him. Genesis 31 It is not God when your in-laws are always fighting you, so that you even have to run away for your life. When there is a good family relationship, you are free to visit your parents. Your wife or your in-laws should never forbid you to visit your parents. Ruth said to Naomi, your people shall be my people, Ruth 1 verse 16, and your wife also should be visiting her in-laws and vice versa. When God had delivered the Hebrews from Egypt and they were in the wilderness, Jethro brought Moses' wife and sons to him in the wilderness. So it means when Moses was away in Egypt, Jethro took care of Moses' wife and children. When you have a good relationship with your in-laws, they will even babysit for you or lodge with you for a period of time until you are back on your feet. The children can go on holiday to their grandparents or you can all go on holidays. 
the parents, grandparents and children. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, that Jehovah had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom. For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, and the name of the other was Eliezer. For the God of my father, my help, delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he camped at the Mount of God. And he said to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, have come to you and your wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down to him and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent, and Moses told his father-in-law all that Jehovah had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how Jehovah delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which Jehovah had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be Jehovah, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Exodus 18, verse 1 to 10. You see, Moses ran to meet his father-in-law. Of course he wanted to see his wife and his sons, but the Bible says he ran to meet Jethro to explain to you the love that Moses had for his father-in-law. They kissed and asked each other about their welfare. Moses spent time talking to his father-in-law about everything that had happened to him and all his adventures in God. Jethro rejoiced with him. When you have a good relationship with your in-laws, you will talk to your father-in-law, your mother-in-law at length about everything, and you will rejoice together. I know sometimes there is a language barrier in some cases. Jethro was black, and so was Moses' wife Zipporah. Many in Israel did not like the skin color of Jethro and Zipporah, and even the elder brother of Moses, Aaron, and his elder sister Miriam did not like Zipporah because she was black. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the black woman whom he had taken, for he had taken a Cushite woman or Ethiopian woman, Numbers 12 verse 1. But Moses did not care what the skin color of his in-laws or his wife was, neither did Jethro care about the skin color of Moses and his people. Ruth also had a good relationship with her mother-in-law Naomi. Ruth said to her mother-in-law Naomi, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you, for wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death passed you and me. Ruth 1 verse 16 to 17 Yes, Ruth was from Moab and Naomi from Israel. But by being married into the family of Naomi, Ruth genuinely loved the Israelites also. She saw herself like an Israelite, though she was from Moab. If you cannot lodge in the house of your in-laws, something is wrong. There is a bad relationship. You must feel at home in the house of your parents-in-law. Some people think that they only married the man or the woman, and when they say I do on the day of the wedding, it is only to each other until death parts the two of them. The truth is, you also say I do to the family of each other until death parts the two families. Your family becomes his family and his family becomes your family. 
When Rebecca came to Isaac, Isaac brought her to the tent of his mother Sarah, and he took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Genesis 24 verse 67 Of course Isaac had his own tent. He was a forty-year-old man when he married Rebecca, but he brought her to his mother's tent to signify that my people are now your people. Where my mother lodges is where you will lodge. I share my place of birth, the good and bad moments of my life with you. I bring you where it all started, so that you know where I came from. I tell you the story of my whole life. You know the nakedness of my childhood, and now see the nakedness of my manhood. To be continued.